Hello there, I'm Patrick. You might remember me from the multiple times I've talked about video games. Like this one here. Go Pizza Tower. Very good. Please play it. Please. But, if you're here from Adora Entertainment, you'll remember me as Apple Boy. The guy who talked about Walt Disney on video for six minutes straight. Oh, good times. I'm now here, on my channel, with a simulcast, both here and on Medora Entertainment, to bring you a video regarding something I'm a little less passionate about than Walt Disney on video. Still pretty passionate about it, considering I spent, uh, I don't know, maybe six-ish months working on this? Yeah, six months in the making. Now I know how it actually feels. Anyways, it's time for a video about the Disney Channel. Yeah! 40 years, baby! Woo! Hmm. Now maybe I should make the Medora viewers a little more comfortable. You know what? I'm gonna do that. Give me a minute. Oh! Huh? Oh, hell yeah, I look great! Ah, the 1980s. I've already talked about how much I love this decade, what with the leg warmers, spandex, and the original Donkey Kong. Still hate mullets, though. Christ, they are gross. This time, we're going back a bit further than we went with home video, this time to the year 1950. This year, the Walt Disney Company would broadcast its first ever thing meant for TV, known as One Hour in Wonderland. It was a collection of clips from many different bits of Disney's cartoon library. There are also live action segments starring Walt Disney himself, as well as some stars of the era. This would be the start of Disney's history in the space of television. Now, we fast forward to 1977, when Jim Jamiro suggested a Disney television network. But, because Epcot was being built at Walt Disney World down in Florida, this idea was shelved until 1981, when Disney struck a deal with a satellite unit of Group W. Or not. Yeah, Group W dropped out of development of what would come to be known as the Disney Channel. Despite this, Disney continued development on the project, completely on their own. The channel's development was completed in 1983, and the channel as a whole was launched on April 18th, 1983. Wait, that means that Disney Channel turned 40 this year! Ladies and gentlemen, Eric, the founder and host of Medora Entertainment. Thanks for having me, Patrick. Anytime, Eric. Hell, without you, I technically wouldn't be making this video. Good point. As you were saying, the Disney Channel was launched on April 18, 1983, with shows such as Good Morning Mickey, Welcome to Pooh Corner, You and Me, Kid, and Contraption. Later on in 1983, there were two more shows added, those being Epcot Magazine and Donald Duck Presents. Say, Eric, do you have any experiences with these older shows growing up? No, those shows were way before my time. I'm a 2000s kid. Same here, man. The closest thing I've ever had to seeing these shows is advertisements for them in a few Disney Channel logo history videos, but I have seen quite a few of those neat bumpers. My favorite's gotta be the TV dinner one. How about you? Which one of the real-life Mickey bumpers is your favorite? I'd have to say either the one where Mickey's working in an animation studio, or the one with the mountain that looks like it was ripped straight from the Paramount logo. Oh yeah, those are some good ones. Anywho, at the time, the Disney Channel's shows aired for 16 hours a day, from 7am to 11pm. So, about the time I spend in my average day. You know, Patrick, all this talk of the Disney Channel is neat and all, but what about the Disney Channel magazine? The what? The Disney Channel magazine. It was a magazine containing stories about upcoming shows, and even a mini-TV guide to get you through the programs to be broadcast the month of the magazine. Huh. I didn't know there was a Disney Channel magazine. It's really cool, actually. Does it predate the actual TV guide? No actual TV guide started publishing in 1953. You don't say. Anyways, concluding this section about the Disney Channel magazine, it finished its publication in 1997 and was replaced by Behind the Ears. Wait. You've never even heard of the magazine prior to me telling you about it, yet you know when it ceased publication and was replaced with another magazine? Yeah, plot holes are funny like that. Anyways, 
The Disney Channel started off as a premium channel, like Take Two and Festival, from Eric's video on the history of HBO Family. Also in 1986, there was a slight change to the logo, with the word Disney now being in the iconic Walt Disney script that we all know too well today. Also, also, in 1986, those real-life Mickey bumpers we mentioned earlier were produced by a company known as Colossal Figures who also did work for Nickelodeon on Eureka's Castle. Things were looking better and better for the Disney Channel, especially on December 1st, 1986. Because then, the Disney Channel began broadcasting 24 hours a day. By the start of the 90s, the Disney Channel had around 5 million subscribers nationwide. Also in 1990, TCI's Montgomery, Alabama system became the first cable provider to include the Disney Channel by default. Wait, Patrick, we've forgotten to mention all the other Disney shows that came out in the 80s. Ah, crap. We should probably do that before it's too late. The rest of the shows on the Disney Channel in the 1980s are as follows. The Wuzzles, Adventures of the Gummy Bears, DuckTales, Symbol, Disney Family Album, Dumbo's Circus, Videopolis, The New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers, Good Morning, Miss Bliss, The All-New Mickey Mouse Club, and Teen Win Loser Draw. Phew, thanks for reminding me, Eric. I'm glad we've now prevented any unforeseen consequences of not listing all the Disney Channel shows that were released in the 1980s. Now where were we? Ah yes, the history of the channel itself. Pretty much nothing happened until 1996, where Anne Sweeney was appointed as the president of operations at the Disney Channel. As president, she began overseas operations of the Disney Channel, launching the channel in Southeast Asia. The very next year, the Disney Channel underwent a pretty significant rebranding. Yes indeed. When the Disney Channel went to rebrand, they changed almost everything. New logo being a square-shaped television with Mickey ears, with a 1930s era Mickey usually being in the screen of the television, and the name being shortened to just Disney Channel as opposed to THE Disney Channel. The channel also began a transition to just being a basic cable network instead of the premium model of the past. In addition to that, the very next year, the Disney Channel would be split into three different programming blocks. Vault Disney, Zoog Disney, and Playhouse Disney. Now, Eric, seeing as programming blocks are your bread and butter, I'll let you take over for a bit to discuss them. Alrighty, Patrick, sure thing. As Patrick alluded to, between 1997 and 1998, three blocks launched on Disney Channel. Vault Disney, Zoog Disney, and Playhouse Disney. Vault Disney showcased classic Disney media, including movies, shows, and animated shows from Disney's early years. It initially only ran from 9pm on Sundays to 6am the next morning, but its schedule was soon extended to every day for 5-6 to six hours in the wee hours every morning. Zoog Disney was aimed at preteens and was hosted by characters called Zoogs who would interact between shows. It aired Disney Channel original shows and looked and felt a bit like a Disney version of pre feet Face Noggin. Seriously, if you compare Zoog Disney bumpers with pre-2002 Noggin bumpers, you're bound to notice more than a few similarities. Finally, Playhouse Disney was aimed at preschoolers and was made to compete with the likes of Nick Jr. On the daily schedule, it would usually pick off right where Vault Disney left off, airing for 4 hours on the weekends and 6 hours on the weekdays. In 2002, for Disney Channel's refresh, Vault Disney and Zoog Disney were killed off, and Playhouse Disney ended up becoming the only one of the three blocks to survive, eventually becoming its own thing. I actually made a whole history video about Playhouse Disney if you're interested. Back to you, Patrick. Give us the laydown of the 2002 refresh. Well, you see, I would. But we haven't mentioned the Disney Channel shows that ran in the 90s. Oh, we'd better get to it then. Indeed we should. From 1990 to 1999, there were many new shows. These shows were... Tailspin, Darkwing Duck, Goof Troop, The Little Mermaid, Raw Tunage, Bonkers, Marsupalami, Aladdin, Gargoyles, The Schnookums and Meat Funny Cartoon Show, Timon and Pumbaa, Quack Pack, the Mighty Ducks, 
dog. Yeah, that dog. Seasons 5 to 7 only. Jungle Cubs, Nightmare Ned, 101 Dalmatians in the series, Pepper Ann, Recess, Hercules the Animated Series, Mickey Mouse Works, The Secret of Lost Creek, Adventures in Wonderland, Flash Forward, Mad Libs, Going Wild with Jeff Corwin, Bug Juice, Off the Wall, The Famous Jet Jackson, So Weird, and The Jersey. There we go, all of the 90s Disney Channel shows. Starting with Tailspin and ending with The Jersey, those shows were also aired on the Disney's One Saturday Morning block on ABC. And now, for the 2002 Refresh. Ah yes, the 2002 Refresh. Like Eric said, in 2002, Disney Channel went under a massive refresh, ditching the box-shaped Mickey Head TVs for the most iconic version of the channel to date. The one using this logo and this jingle written by Alex Larisanko. Thank you to Kevin Perjurer, better known as Defunct Land, for providing the world with that information. Isn't this where the famous wand IDs were beginning to be used? Oh yeah, it is. You know, I always wanted to be in one of those when I was younger. Hey Ark, off topic, but have you ever heard of Game Boy Advance Video? Yes, though I never used it. Man, oh man, were you ever missing out. It's gotta be my absolute favorite way to watch the uh, four episodes from Season 1 of Spongebob on my Game Boy Advance. Now, it wasn't just Nickelodeon shows that were on GBA Video, but Cartoon Network, and yes, Disney Channel, using the logo from the 2002 Refresh. Hey, speaking of the Game Boy Advance and Disney Channel, did you know there's a limited edition Disney Channel Game Boy Advance SP? That's really cool! What shows came on the Disney Channel cartridge? There are actually two Disney Channel carts, a variety pack with episodes from Lilo and Stitch the Series, Kim Possible, and Brandy and Mr. Whiskers, and a standalone Proud Family pack. Hmm, that's cool. Back to the Disney Channel. Along with the refresh, Playhouse Disney received a similar logo to the main Disney Channel, and eventually a new block was added, Toon Disney, which I have made a video about. Link is in the video description. If I remember to put it there, of course. Now, after the refresh, Disney Channel was just sort of coasting along. In September 2002, both Vault Disney and Zoog Disney were killed off, although the Zoogs themselves existed a little while longer, seeing as Zoog Disney still exists as a separate website than the original Disney Channel website until 2003. Vault Disney's fate is a bit lamer, seeing as it was replaced with same-day repeats of a channel's regular programming, both original and required. It's just a delay feed. Imagine you're a block, doing so good airing your own original content, and then you just get replaced with a friggin' delay feed. Ugh, that would suck. Hey Patrick, you know how so far in the video the programming of the era has been the last thing we mentioned before moving on to the next era or refresh? Yeah, do you think we should do it now just to get it out of the way? I think it'd be good to avoid whatever consequences that we've just barely been dodging the last two times. I'll start us off. Alright, go for it. Starting from the year 2000, there was... Totally Circus, Even Stevens, In a Heartbeat, Totally Hoops, Lizzie McGuire, The Proud Family, Kim Possible, Totally In Tune, That's So Raven, Lilo and Stitch, The Series, Dave the Barbarian, Psy Girls, Phil of the Future, Brandy and Mr. Whiskers, American Dragon, Jake Long, The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, and The Buzz on Maggie. Mind if I do the rest from this era, seeing as I was actually around for their existence? Sure, why not? After The Buzz on Maggie, there was The Emperor's New School, <coughs> Anna Montana. Hey, that's my bit! What can I say? I learned from the best. Anyways, there was also Shorty McShorts Shorts, the Replacements, Cory in the House, Phineas and Ferb, Number One still to this day, Wizards of Waverly Place, The Sweet Life on Deck, Sunny with a Chance, <coughs> Jonas Elliot, <laughs> Good Luck Charlie, Fish Hooks, <coughs> Shake It Up, and Take Two with Phineas and Ferb. Man, I need a cough drop after that. There we go, all the 2000s Disney Channel shows. Hey, what are the consequences of us forgetting to mention these shows anyways? The world collapses in on itself. Whoa, uh, that's so much worse than I had imagined. Why, what did you think the consequences were? 
I don't know, I almost thought maybe someone else would barge in and tell you that you forgot to mention the shows. Like, uh, me? Yeah, exactly. Who are you? Oh, I'm Caden. Nice to meet you. Caden, would you get out of here? Eric and I are in the middle of something. Fine, fine. See you around, Apple Boy. You know, I love that you're barely even questioning what just happened. What can I say? I have seen some weird things in my day. Fascinating. Anyhow, in 2007, Disney Channel dropped most of their acquired programs, moving them to what are known as graveyard slots. Doing this increased their reliance on teen-oriented sitcoms, bringing these shows into the limelight. These shows, such as The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, Good Luck Charlie, and especially Hannah Montana blew up in popularity. But personally, I never understood it. Back when these shows were popular, I was just like three or four, so I suppose it makes sense that I was never into any of these shows. How about you, Eric? Any particular opinions on the live-action titans of Disney Channel? Honestly, I don't remember them much either. The only one I watched any significant amount of was Zack and Cody, and I guess that one was alright. I don't even remember Good Luck Charlie, and of course, I never dared to watch Hannah Montana. Ugh. I see, that's fair. Hey, would you look at the time? Yep, it's the 2010s. Some say that this era of Disney Channel was the best era, while the shows like Gravity Falls, Bunked, and Best Friends were never dominating in ratings. Ironically enough, this was the time that I watched Disney Channel the very least, so I can't speak much for these testimonies. Yeah, I was more of a Cartoon Network and Boomerang kid around this time. But then again, this was also around the time that Boomerang was turning into Cartoon Network's twin sibling, so yeah. Sad times. Also in the 2010s, Disney Channel changed its logo. Twice. From May of 2010 to May of 2014, Disney Channel's logo was just the 2002 logo, edited to be in a rounded off square. Looks to me kinda like an iPhone app icon. <laughs> Man, I love foreshadowing. You're talking about the Watch Disney apps, which went up in June of 2012, right? Right you are, Eric. The Watch Disney Channel, Watch Disney XD, and Watch Disney Junior apps went up in 2012 and were consolidated into the Disney Now app in 2017. But, from the looks of things, Disney Now seems to be obsolete due to Disney Plus. We're getting way ahead of ourselves. Let's rewind back to 2012, where Disney Channel ended Nickelodeon's 17 year run of being the highest rated cable station in the US, according to AC Nielsen. Who goes to Nickelodeon for keeping the top spot that long, though? As well as this, Disney put out four DCOMs that year, those being Frenemies, Radio Rebel, Let It Shine, and Girl vs. Monster. They also announced their first collaboration with Marvel Entertainment, which Disney had acquired back in 2009, that being Phineas and Ferb, Mission Marvel. Speaking of Mission Marvel, I didn't really care for it back then, because I wasn't that into superheroes. But after my MCU binge a few years back, however, I can safely say that it is my favorite Phineas and Ferb thing ever. Alright, that's cool. We should probably start talking about the shows now, right? Good point. Some of my favorite shows premiered during this decade. Starting off in 2011, we have Ant Farm, So Random, Prank Stars, Jesse, Austin and Alley, Gravity Falls, Code 9, Dog with a Blog, the new Mickey Mouse shorts which evolved into the wonderful Blank of Mickey Mouse series on Disney+, Plus. Live and Maddie, Wander Over Yonder, I Didn't Do It, Win, Lose, or Draw, Girl Meets World, Casey Undercover, Star vs. the Forces of Evil, Best Friends Whenever, Bunked, Descendants Wicked World, Stuck in the Middle, Walk the Prank, Bizarre Dvark, Milo Murphy's Law, which was a spiritual successor to Phineas and Ferb, Mech X4, Tangled the Series, later renamed to Rapunzel's Tangled Adventure, Andy Mack, Raven's Home, the 2017 revival of DuckTales, Big Hero 6 the Series, Big City Greens, a revival of Bug Juice, entitled Bug Juice My Adventures at Camp, Coop and Cammy Ask the World, Cindy to the Max, Fast Lane, Just Roll With It, Gabby Duran and the Uncitables, and Amphibia. This era, specifically in the animation scene, is what I like to call the story-driven era. 
This is the era that shows like Gravity Falls, Star vs. the Forces of Evil, DuckTales 2017, and Amphibia aired, with all of these being heavily story-driven shows. That's very true, but an equal number of the animated shows, those being Big City Greens, Wander Over Yonder, The Mickey Mouse Shorts, and Descendants Wicked World, aren't particularly story-driven or serialized. I see your point, but even still, a huge era for serialized animation on Disney Channel. Well, considering the fact that we're swiftly catching up to the present day, I suppose we have to bring up... 2020. Those were some perfectly timed thunderclaps. Yes, they were, because so far the 2020s have been a very dark time. What with COVID, so many celebrity deaths, controversies, and incompetent billionaires purchasing social media platforms, <coughs> Musk, <coughs> Twitter, there hasn't been anything positive going on anywhere, really. Especially not on Disney Channel. Because all around the world, Disney Channel, Disney XD, and Disney Junior Channels have all been shutting down completely in favor of Disney+. Plus. Disney's even halted physical media production in Australia for crying out loud. See, what I tell you? What did I tell you all at the end of the Walt Disney Home Video History video? Flashback. And here comes Disney Plus to kill us all. Oh god no. Man, you must be some kind of a prophet. Yeah, a pizza prophet. Well, seeing as it's the 2020s now, we should get to mentioning the shows that premiered during this time. Uh, yep, let's get to it so we won't have to do it for the rest of the day. So far in the 2020s, we've had The Owl House, Disney Fam Jam, Secrets of Sulphur Springs, Disney's Magic Bake Off, The Ghost and Golly McGee, The Villains of Valley View, Ultraviolet and Black Scorpion, Chibiverse, Hamster and Gretel, Marvel's Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur, Kiff, Saturdays, Haley's on it, pretty freaking scary, and soon, Primos. Alright, time for our final few history blurbs. Already? It feels like we're still just getting started. Eh, no matter. From January 6, 2020 onwards, Disney Channel went completely ad-free. Only on weeknights and weekend mornings, unfortunately. After that, COVID-19 hit. So a lot more people were watching Disney Plus than they used to, leading to Disney Channel losing 33% of its viewership. That, of course, led to the aforementioned Disney Channel shutdowns. Not much else happened in 2020, but in 2021, Bunked became the first Disney Channel original series to run for five seasons, dethroning the previous record holder of Phineas and Ferb. Not anymore, at least, considering the fact that Phineas and Ferb is coming back for two more seasons. On July 15th of last year, Zombies 3 released on Disney+, Plus, being the first Disney Channel original movie to do so, with it premiering a month later on Disney Channel. Said premiere being followed by another premiere, that being Hamster and Gretel, Dan Pothmeyer's third show with Disney Channel. And finally, on March 14th of this year, 2023, Disney Channel presented an alternate telecast of an NHL game produced by ESPN, marking the first time a live sporting event premiered on the network. As you can probably imagine, the regular telecast aired on ESPN. Although, why wouldn't it? I think that's about it, Patrick. We've covered the full history of Disney Channel all in a single video. That is insane to think about, isn't it? Well, either way, Thank you, viewers, for watching this freaking odyssey of the history video. And thanks again, Eric, for coming on and doing this with me. Of course, Patrick. Thanks for having me. Maybe I'll have you back again on my channel for a Halloween special or something. Sounds good, man. And again, to you viewers, thanks for watching. And as always, stay, stay tuned. tuned.